Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. It's been around for decades. Now residents are planning to take new action against a landfill amid growing health concerns. Glad you're with us tonight for Local 4 News at 11. Odors coming from the old Arbor Hills landfill in the Northville area have been an ongoing problem. And it was once again the focus of a town hall meeting earlier tonight. Jermont Terry was at tonight's meeting at Northville High School. And Jermont residents there say they're really ready to take this fight to the next level now. They sure are, Sandra. Currently, there are 72 active Mich landfills in the state of Michigan, and the MDEQ says it responds more times to the Arbor Hills facility than any other facility across the state. And that's more fuel for neighbors to now file a lawsuit against the landfill owners. Trucks come and go several times a day, dumping loads of trash and waste at the Arbor Hills landfill. Since 1970, the facility operated at the corner of Six Mile and Napier. But over the years, homes went up with this view in their yards. Our residents have, uh, have put up with three and a half years worth of odors. A recent violation found asbestos not covered properly. The company has assured us that they are following the state and federal requirements for asbestos control. And if they're following those requirements, then the practices should be safe to people. The Michigan Department of Environmental Quality oversees the landfill, and the number of people complaining jumped significantly. In 2016, just more than 522 complained, but in 2018, nearly 2,000 complaints came in, and so far this year, just under 1,000. I am not aware of any long-term studies regarding health effects. That's why the nonprofit group, the Conservancy Initiative, plans to file intent to sue the landfill owners. But what is the basis of your lawsuit? Violations of the Clean Air Act and a lot more. Neighbors left the town hall hearing the state say the air is safe, but doubt still lingers. It pointed out to me other things, almost like a, uh, like our, am I living next to a volcano? That's what, sort of in the back of my mind. Now, over the years, this landfill has faced many fines and violations from the state. But one, I should say two legislators, they're going a step further, trying to essentially change the law. They want to not double the fines, but make the fines 10 times more for any landfill that has violations from the MDEQ. We should point out, despite invitations from this landfill owners to show up here at this town hall, None of them accepted that invitation. Reporting live in Northville, Jermont Terry, Local 4. And Jermont, at this point, any idea where things stand with the landfill's attempt to try to expand its facility? Sandra, right now, that attempt is still moving forward. The MDEQ meets with the landfill owners next week, and they will see whether or not that gets approved. But we should point out, all violations have to be cleaned up before this expansion is even considered in the next steps. Yeah, not over yet. We'll be following it. Thanks, Jermont. A manhunt is underway for a killer on Detroit's west side after a fight turned deadly. Tim Pamplin is on the scene right now with the night cam. Tim? We're at Asbury Park and Plymouth, that's a Southfield Freeway, I-96 area. Crime scene investigators just arriving on the scene, along with homicide investigators, after I'm being told a 21-year-old man was gunned down in an alley. Now, here's some video from earlier in the evening when this 911 call came out of shots fired. I'm hearing that three young men were in this alley discussing a gun, a pistol, when one of the men turned the pistol on one of the others, robbed him, and then shot him three times. Now, in that alley, there are no cameras. Out front here on Plymouth, I counted about six cameras. Police are looking at those cameras now, trying to get some leads. But again, an argument over a gun this evening has led to gunfire and one 20 year old dead. That's the scene on the west side with a night cam. Tim Pamplin, local four. All right, Tim. Tonight, the full scope of the damage at Notre Dame Cathedral is coming into view. The fire has been put out, but firefighters are still on standby amid fears that the unstable structure could still partially collapse. Meantime, we're hearing from an Ann Arbor family who walked right into that chaos last night. Mara McDonald's been in contact with them in Paris today, and Mara, they went back to see the aftermath. They sure did, Devin, but you've got to hear this. So the Shy family goes to a hat maker in France yesterday, in Paris. They're learning how to make their very own French chapeau. They walk out and right into the chaos that was that Notre Dame fire. They were there before the French firefighters even made it there. Larry Shy and his family were caught up in the crush of people. I don't believe what I'm seeing. We got into a humongous crowd. We were at the front of the crowd um, because we were one of the first ones there. We saw the fire engines coming by us and trying to get through us and the police. So, like, we were there before most or maybe even almost all of the fire department. It was 
was disorienting. He asked a man on the street what was happening. They had said, yes, the Notre Dame is on fire. And when we heard that, our hearts just sank. There's so many people that are in shock. It's almost like they're statues. As the fire burned, nobody on the street knew if this was terrorism or something else. They got out of there, but returned today to see the aftermath. I can't believe that the glass is still intact on yeah. a lot of it. It must be so the, delicate. You can see all the black here, the soot here. He describes Paris as numb today. There is no laughter, voices are hushed, the city is eerily still. He asked a man on the street if he spoke English, and if he did, what the latest was. I just hear the trembling in his voice, and I just said, look, I said, we're, we're going through it with you right now, but I'm going home soon, and you're not. This is your country, and I just want to let you know, as an American, I, I extend my condolences to you and your country. I, I feel bad, you know, in general, but I, I just I feel so bad for the French. Back here live, the Shy family comes home tomorrow after what has been an indescribable trip to Paris. We are live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. A chilly night across Metro Detroit. A lot of us managed to stay dry, but however, there is more rain headed this week. Yeah, lots more. Just think of how green the grass is going to be eventually. Sure, look on the positive. <laughs> From all this rain. Uh, it's not going to amount to a lot. We just have multiple chances going forward. It seems like every time we turn around, uh, the showers are coming down. This is the last of those moving through tonight, so we're going to be left with clouds tonight. That's the way we're going to start out the morning commute, so no problems uh, in the morning with the rain. Once we get into the afternoon, we may see another round of rain, but just like today, the majority of this is going to be in our north zone. This isn't going to last very long as it pushes off to the north. But yeah, we've got more coming Thursday, Friday, and then into the weekend as well. Temperatures starting out in the mid 40s, but with all the clouds around, really not going to go anywhere tomorrow. So below average temperatures, we're going to look at some warmer numbers and some stormy conditions coming up in the seven day forecast. Devin. And a Clinton Township gym owner faced his victims today before learning his fate. 35 year old Matt Krakowski was arrested last year when a hidden camera was found inside the changing room at Switch CrossFit. The camera was discovered by an off duty police officer who found it mounted in the ceiling tiles. It just disgusted me that you were walking around with all of these older women and flashing your little smile. Little did any of them realize what a low life you were. The punishment included 11 months in the Macomb County Jail and then 36 to 240 months in a state prison. His name is also going to appear on the state sex offender registry. Jurors are going to return tomorrow for deliberations in the trial of a former state trooper charged with second degree murder in the death of a Detroit teenager. Damon Grimes died after crashing his four wheeler when he was shot with a taser in 2017. Mark Bester says he believed the 15 year old was armed during their chase, but it turned out Grimes was not carrying a weapon. This is the second trial now for Bester as his first ended without a unanimous verdict. A Detroit elementary school teacher on leave tonight while the district investigates allegations of misconduct. A grandmother of two students at John J. Bagley Elementary says the teacher she feels had inappropriate contact with students outside of school. The district has not named the teacher and has also not elaborated on the complaint, but says the teacher is now on leave while it investigates. We now learn Michigan's measles outbreak is directly connected to the massive outbreak in New York. Michigan health officials say a man from New York traveled to southeast Michigan and was unknowingly contagious with measles during his visit. And so far, 38 cases of measles in Michigan have now been linked to that one man. Nationwide, there are 555 cases, nearly 100 more than we reported just a week ago. Farmington Hills police are on high alert tonight following a suspicious person report. The incident happened in the area of Albion and Liberty Street, right near Middle Belt. The man, described as a white man in his 20s, uh, allegedly approached a group of children in a blue four-door sedan, offering them a ride. If you have any information at all, call Farmington Hills police. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel says she will not enforce state laws banning abortion if the U.S. Supreme Court overturns it. Nessel says it's likely that the 1973 Roe v. Wade ruling legalizing abortion will be reversed, and she's pledging to never prosecute a woman or her doctor for terminating a pregnancy. Those comments come after Ohio recently imposed what many call one of the country's strictest abortion regulations. 
It is a potential medical breakthrough. What scientists overseas have created for the very first time that could save thousands of lives. Also a substitute teacher arrested at school what she was caught doing in front of her students that has her facing felony charges. But first, investigators say she became obsessed with the 1999 mass shooting at Columbine High School. The threats she's now making that have police adding security to 20 Colorado schools, including Columbine. 